church today, so you come up and sit down in the front here. It might be warmer if everybody's bunched up. Coffee and hot chocolate in the back. If you, would, uh, if you, if you have a cell phone, please turn it off. I bet it. If you've been here before, one thing you got to know is you're going to get a lot of exercise because I'll have you stand up when you're not supposed to. I'll have you sit down when you're not supposed to, and then you got to get back up again. So <clears throat> that's just the way it is. So welcome to Veterans Day Cer Ceremony in Vettendorf. My name is Greg Adamson. Um, I've been a member of this uh, memorial committee since its inception, and um, so I'm going to recognize, first of all, Bud Dillon. Where's your hand, Bud? Or stand up, whatever. Right there. Now, Bud, Bud was, uh, I was on, the, happened to be on the park board at the time. He came to the park board meeting. He said, is there any land anywhere that put a, a memorial for veterans in Bettendorf? I said, yeah, that's a great idea. So he looked here and there and came up with this one. city was nice enough to give us, uh, or let us put the memorial on their land. And uh, I don't know, but if you realize this, but we had our uh, ribbon cutting, tw it'll be 20 years on uh, D-Day in 2023. Yeah. So this is all your fault. We got, uh, let's see, uh, John Sepikin, where's John? He's around somewhere. I think, he's, I think he's back that way. He was one of the original, there were seven of us originally. Unfortunately, we've had 
three pass away. And then we've had some interim, and uh, this last year, Denny Richland passed away, son and, and daughter-in-law are over here. Uh, great loss to us. And wife, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. You're getting camouflage. I can't see you. Right, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. So anyway, uh, Bob Sarter over here. And uh, did I miss anybody that's here from the committee? I don't think so. So anyway, uh, onward and upward. Now, just lately, the city has been nice enough to agree to take care of maintenance and insurance and all that stuff. Because we're all getting along in the tooth. Um, but we do have, I'm sorry, we got one, one new member, Patrick Larson over here. Larkin, I'm sorry, Larkin. And he probably is half the age of the rest of us. So it's hard to get, it's hard to get young blood on, the, on, these, on these committees anymore, but thank you for helping us out. He was also assigned uh, to, for the weather, so I don't know how well he did on that one. We should have given it to uh, Pastor uh, Carver. He probably has better connections. So anyway, next uh, June 6th, we're going to have a, a set ceremony here for our 20th. There's a, almost a thousand names now on the, on the uh, memorial. You have to have some connection. I've got applications if you need them. Uh, you have to have some connection to Bettendorf other than driving down Interstate 80. Live here, work here, uh, gone to school here, things like that. Been on one of the, uh, the veterans committees, veterans groups. So let's get started with an invocation by Pastor Tom Carver of Asbury Methodist Church. And then we'll post the colors. I'll try to get this right this year. So stay standing for both. Do stand. My standard response to questions about the weather is that uh, I'm in sales and not management. <laughs> On November 1st, 1918, Sergeant Fred Denton Lee was wounded in the Battle of Chateau Thierry near the border of France and Germany. He sustained major damage in his left leg but had to wait five days before being transported to a military hospital. He'd been married for a little over a year and joined the Army in the fall of 1917. When he left for active duty near the, in the spring, he had left his wife who was pregnant with their first child who was born in May. Fred Lee carried with him several pictures of his wife and daughter and letters that she had written. That great war ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 104 years ago today. Fred Lee died the next day, November the 12th, and this flag was draped on his coffin when he was buried in France. It was sent back to his wife, Juanita Angerman Lee, who gave it to her daughter, Mona Catherine Lee Moore, who gave it to her daughter, Mona Lee Moore Carver, who gave it to me, Thomas Lee Carver. So in honor of Fred Lee and all the veterans who served that I would like to offer, invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God of all nations, we thank you for the bounty that we enjoy in this part of your world. We thank you for all those who are willing to serve and give of themselves for the well-being of others. We pray for all the families of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. May we seek to honor their memories by being good citizens in our neighborhoods who care for each other and part of a nation that is united in our quest to offer liberty and justice for all. It is in respect to people of all faiths or of no faith that we seek a common cause and I offer this prayer as a follower of Jesus. Amen. 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 Present arms. Forward at a half step. March.
Present Clark. Porter Clark. the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave through through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Order of arms. Right faith. Forward at a half step. Mark. Please be seated. I think. I'd like to also take this time to thank the American Legion writers and the Patriot Guard writers for the flag line. And then for you, those of you who don't know, the VVA has two chapters in the Quad Cities. It's the uh, 776 on the Iowa side, 299 on the Illinois side. And my understanding is that 776 is, are in Washington, D.C. doing a ceremony there quite an honor, and uh, we thank the 299th for coming over and uh, helping us out today. And thank you to Jim Bell, of course, for singing for us. <clears throat> um, next thing on my agenda here is to acknowledge special guests. The mayor's going to do uh, some of our local people, but I want to I want to embarrass somebody. Where's Al Nelson at? Come on up here, Al. <clears throat> please. He's bigger than I am. I have to say please. Come around. Over here. So, this is Al Nelson. He's uh, He was a Marine. He is a Marine. Was, well, how are you supposed to say it? Marine. Yeah, Marine. But Al, Al uh, has a business, Barnum Concrete, and uh, in, in 2002, 2001, 2002, when we were actually building this, putting this together, Al volunteered, took two weeks from his business, he's got wife, kids, bills, just like everybody else, and took two weeks out and did all this cement work for free. Wow. And then and then a couple years later, we filled up the first five pillars and we said, hey Al, we need to do another one. So we did another circle and he was back doing it again. So thank you so much. Sir. Hey, Ron. He also has been nice enough to come down with his uh, restored... Uh, Jeep over there. So if you get a chance, go go say hi to Al and thank him and uh, and look at his his Jeep. What's that stand for? I forget. Jeep. Just Jeep. I thought I, I thought I missed something. 
<laughs> Let's see. Who else here? Okay, so we have some uh, some speakers today. The first speaker is John Wyland, commander of the VFW. John. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests. Thank you all for being here today. Today, we honor every man and woman who has probably worn the uniform and bravely defended our nation while protecting his people from the evils of this world. <clears throat> every American, no matter where they live or what they do, reaps the benefit of their service. Today is a special day. It is, in fact, a remarkable day. As veterans of foreign wars and as members of an organization whose primary mission is to serve those who have served, we understand that Veterans Day is a day of deep significance, of opportunity. It is a day to recognize and honor the millions of men and women who answered without hesitation when their country called. Today should also be a day of reflection, a day where every American takes time to consider the legacy of freedom and liberty that has been passed on to us. It is a day to think about the awesome responsibility that is ours and what it takes to maintain this land of the free, this home of the brave. Across the nation, patriotic Americans are gathering at events like this one and are remembering the countless sacrifices of our nation's veterans. Our veterans cherish the values and virtues upon which our nation was founded and have bravely preserved them at all costs. So it is our responsibility to reflect on the many costs attached to our victories over tyranny and the many liberties we enjoy today because of the self and sacrifices. Veterans Day is a day for every American, every citizen, no matter what race, religion, or political affiliation they might have, to contemplate the price of our liberty. As we honor the veterans of our nation, we must also acknowledge and give thought to those who are currently serving. Those who wear the uniform of today's military services face a world that is filled with change and challenge. Thousands of our service members who have been thrust in the boiling cauldron of war, they too are veterans of foreign wars. As they serve to protect all of us, we have an equal responsibility to care for them and their families. It is our obligation to do so. To do anything less would diminish and cheapen the service and sacrifice of millions of patriots who have selflessly served this country. We owe so much to today's generation of great patriots and all who come before them. And while we can never repay the debt owed to them, we can show our appreciation through actions to ensure they receive proper and adequate medical care for both their visible and invisible wounds, that they have the opportunity to pursue the American dream they sacrificed for. As a grateful people, we must continue to do all we can to ensure our veterans get the benefits and recognition they have earned and deserve. Let us resolve right now, today, to do these things with a renewed sense of purpose and gratitude. Yes, today is a day to celebrate the courage the deeds, the sacrifice, dedication, and commitment of all veterans who have served this great nation and what is in effect the greatest nation on earth, thanks to their efforts. Happy Veterans Day to all of America's veterans and a seer and heartfelt thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, second speaker is going to be Steve Sater. Right. Satry. Uh, president of the VVA. Uh, 
about Commander Whalen, that's a tough act to follow. And uh, I second everything that John said. And in the interest of all of us, I have edited my speech as it gets colder and colder. <laughs> but on behalf of the Vietnam Veterans of America, I want to thank you for coming and thank you for the support. And I thank the American people for giving us what we missed. I don't have a lot of tolerance for those that whine about the way we were treated. I have zero tolerance really for that but because we need to go forward. But I do thank you and we do appreciate this. Today is the, in essence, it's the 40th anniversary of the Vietnam Wall. It was dedicated on no November 13th, 1982. And as uh, Greg mentioned, we do have uh, three of our members are in Washington, D.C. for the dedication or the honoring of that 40th anniversary of the Vietnam Wall. Uh, and today, as John mentioned, we, we come together to honor and recognize American service members past and presence, present. And this was proclaimed uh, on November 11th, 1919. And then as Armistice Day, and it was changed during Eisenhower's years in 1954 to Veterans Day following World War II and the Korean War. And let's going forward here, in the interest of our comfort. Yeah, that's good. Whether you wore the uniform today or wore it years, years ago, or to honor veterans, represent a fundamental truth. It's not the powerful weapons that our military, that makes our military the greatest in the world. It's not the sophisticated aircraft, missiles, rockets, satellites, and cyber technology systems that make us the most advanced country in the world. The true strength of our military is the spirit and skill of our airmen and others. And the true strength of all our armed forces is seen in the men and women who have worn and now wear the uniform of our nation's military. So it is our privilege, all of us, to say thank you to all American veterans for your quiet courage and exemplary service, to let exemplary service, to let you know we are grateful and acknowledge our many sacrifices and accomplishments. I'd like to read a passage from President Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural address delivered March 4, 1865, as the Civil War is nearing its end. President Lincoln said, With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. President's, President Lincoln's words have stood the test of time and serve today as a commitment to never forget our veterans and those injured in our nation's defense and the families of those who have died in its service. Veterans, you have done your duty to your families, to your communities, to your fallen comrades, and to your country. You have honorably served your nation with great, great distinction, and we can never say it enough. Thank you, and thank you. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> and uh, last but not least, Commander of the American Legion, Rose Scepter. my remarks. Pastor, I appreciate your connections, but I saw a Santa Claus hat. I would like to make a bid for next year to have it be a little warmer, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's great that our nation set aside a day to honor all the veterans and their families. I'd like to tell you what Veterans Day means to me. Veterans Day is I wake up in the morning and I thank people that I'm alive. I open my eyes. Getting out of bed that quick is not quite so fast, but anyway, as the day goes on, I thank myself, I thank everybody for being alive and being able to do things. There's a lot of us that can't, but I appreciate being able to do that. 
And as I go through my day, I think about how blessed I am. Um, and as my day ends and I get back in bed, I thank God for having a Veterans Day. And then I pray that tomorrow I'll be able to open my eyes and have another Veterans Day. To me, every day is a Veterans Day. And what I'm asking of you, each and every one of you, is not just celebrate veterans or honor veterans one day a year. Please keep us in your hearts and your souls and your mind year-round, because we are here year-round. So please, again, thank you for coming out in this cold weather. I know that was short, but, um, but please keep us in our hearts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Russ. <clears throat> I'd like to next introduce uh, our, our mayor, Bob Gallagher, Jr., and he's going to introduce uh, some special guests and our keynote speaker. I got uh, Every year I, uh, I ask our keynote speaker to send a, a biography, and it's amazing what men like Ray and others can can fit into a lifetime. It's just amazing to me. So I have to kind of whittle it down so that we're not standing here for an hour and a half talking about accomplishments. But anyway, um, it's he's he's an impressive guy, and I've met him several times, and he's he's just a wonderful person. So with that, I'm going to introduce the mayor, Bob Gallagher Jr. He's in his uh, just finishing his 11th year as our mayor, and I'm proud to serve with him, Bob. Thank you. It's an honor and privilege to be with you here. On behalf of the city of Bettendorf, welcome to Veterans Memorial Park. We're glad that you're here. Thank you to all who served and to the families who allowed them to do so. We do have some folks here from the city. First, my day job as an attorney, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce Judge Cheryl Trom, who's here, because I get to practice in front of Cheryl and she does an awesome job. Uh, the folks here from the city, we have a newly elected senator in Scott Webster. We have council members, uh, Jerry Sexer, uh, Greg Adamson, who's running today's event, as, as he always does, um, Frank Baden, and I think that's it from elected. And we also have lots of folks here from the city, our, our department heads and leaders who have today off. They're here to celebrate with you and to thank you. Our city administrator, Decker Plain, is here. We have department heads, uh, Keith Kimball, um, Kim Kidwell, Jeff Ryder, Jason Schatt, and Kathleen Richland. I hope I didn't miss anybody who snuck up in the end. But on behalf of the city of Bettendorf, thank you for being here. Thank you to our veterans and, again, to all those who supported them. It's a privilege to be here to introduce our keynote speaker, Ray Hamilton. Ray is currently a contract investigator with the United States Department of Justice, FBI, and was formerly with Amasek International with Top Secret Clearance. Ray is a retired FBI special agent with 30 years of experience. Ray served for 20 of those 30 years as an FBI agent assigned to the Honolulu International Airport for liaison and criminal investigations. In this position, he conducted major organized crime investigations and followed through to successful prosecutions. Ray is recognized for 25 years of well-recognized police instruction as an adjunct instructor at the FBI Academy and recognized by the FBI Training Division as a Master Police Instructor. He is a former FBI Principal Firearms Instructor, SWAT Team Coordinator, FBI National Academy Coordinator, and Field Police Training Officer. Ray attended Central Michigan University, where he earned a degree in public administration. Decker, I got my idea. <laughs> Ray served with our country in the United States Marine Corps and in the United States Navy as an officer. He served on active duty from 1964 to 1970. He attended the United States Navy Pre-Flight School, Basic Flight School, Basic Jet Flight School, Advanced Jet Flight School, became an uh, aircraft carrier qualified and was designated as a certified naval aviator. 
Ray is also nominated, has been nominated to fly with the Blue Angels. He is a Vietnam veteran, having served our country from 1967 to 68, and was honorably discharged as a captain. Ray is the past president of the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 299 in Rock Island. He is currently an independent special investigator for the FBI, conducting background checks for individuals requiring security clearances. Ray has a commercial pilot's license with multi-engine rating. He is married with four adult children, two of which are police officers, and he was honored to be Moline High School Class 1959 Hall of Honor inductee on January 24th of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Hamilton. Pretty much concludes my presentation. <laughs> this is not. This is going to be. I asked my wife, what, what, "What should I?" Oh, I asked Greg, "What should I say?" He said, "Anything you want." My wife says, "Just mind your p's and q's." So, uh, how many people listen to Iron Michaels? You ever heard of the Bill and Ray show? It used to be on several years ago preceded the Welcome Home Dance, the Vietnam Vets Welcome Home Dance. Well, Bill Albrecht of the Bill and Ray Show is Bill right there. Bill, stand up. I know it's hard. I'm Ray. I'm the other half of the Bill and Ray Show. And the only reason I went along with Bill was just to make sure that the truth was told. <laughs> no BS. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to move right along. A little bit different presentation today in that uh, uh, I want to reflect on a couple of gentlemen that are no longer with us that in my estimation were some really wonderful and are, were wonderful veterans. About 2012, when I was just after the president of the 299 Vietnam Vets, uh, Eldon, Eldon Baxter and Alvis Taylor, two of the last three remaining Pearl Harbor survivors in this area, our chapter, and a lot of help from a lot of folks out there, sent those two gentlemen and their wives and their families to Pearl Harbor for the, I think it was the 70th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. And it all started on the Bill and the Ray show, and Dwyer and Michaels, and, and we got it done. And it, it was something that, it was an opportunity we took, took advantage of the opportunity. Well, another opportunity came along when it came to a gentleman by the name of Richard Bailey. How many know Richard, knew of Richard Bailey, Moline, Illinois? Moline High School class of 1941. Uh, he was quite a guy. I ran into him, met him at the Viking Club in Moline. And, and Bill, uh, Dick would just talk about anything. He was a walking historian. And he talked, and, and I saw a, a gem there, and we, we established contact. And it, it determined that he, in our contact, that he was a, a tail gunner in the B-24, World War II. He flew 235 missions over downtown Berlin, or thereabouts in the neighborhood. And part of the protocol <laughs> at that time was, if you flew 235 missions, you got your butt sent home. They sent you home. You you were prized possessions. And, and uh, he got his 235 missions. So I was talking to him one day, and a little bit of little things came out. And I said, well, did you ever get any awards for that? He said, no, I never got any awards. I just wanted to go home. You know, we did our thing. So I said, well, give me your DD-214, which is the chronicle of your, your history in the military, as you all know, if you're veterans. And... Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, I would do that, you know. Well, I said, just leave it in an envelope up here. Took about two months, but the envelope came, and we got it. And I looked at it, and I said, oh, wow. Got a hold of a bunch of folks that were in the chapter, the new Bailey. They said, we, we got to get him to see what he's qualified for, for medals. I'd asked him. I said, here, we got a DSC. He said, uh, nah, man. You never put in for No, no, no. Okay, give me your DD-214. Got the DD-214, got together with Bill, got together with Ken Moffitt, uh, uh, Brian Burston, 
and, and uh, we sent off for a search of his records in the military archives center down in, uh, in um, St. Louis. Never heard a thing. Never heard a thing. About a year and a half or so, Bailey comes walking in the Viking Club, and he says, look at that. And it's a distinguished flying cross from Secretary of the Army. And, uh, well, that was neat. Oh, gosh, that was really neat. And he says, man, you know, no, he said, thanks. So, okay, thanks. So, we got together. This, this is an opportunity. This is a real opportunity now. So we got uh, together, and Bill and I and, uh, and a few of the guys said, well, what, what are we going to do? We're going to do something. Bill had his, his career in the Army was out there in the atmosphere, stratosphere. But uh, we need to do something. Well, he knew General uh, Mike Tucker. He was a three-star First Army, commanding general First Army at the Arsenal. Bill got a hold of him. We got Tucker, who was, got together, and we said, we'll have a celebration. We'll present this award. And uh, so we did. We did on November the 8th, 2014. We had a presentation at the Arsenal. It, the likes of which could have been for any general, or I mean, this was really a neat, neat thing. His family was here, his grandchildren were here, and General Tucker couldn't have been more hospitable. And he opened up the doors to the First Army, and there's Bailey and his family, and they presented the, the, the Distinguished Flying Cross in spades. I mean, it was right on the money. And it couldn't have been any better. End of story? Nay, nay. Paul Harvey said, now here's the rest of the story. <laughs> Bailey comes into the club one day and he, he puts this pile of papers down there and he says, look at that. And I said, you can take this. You can have those. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, well, just look. So I started looking. There's a little brown folder, loose leaf flip top note thing. Bailey had a diary for every mission of those 35 missions. Not only did he have the diary, he had photographs, he had newspaper clippings, and he says, well, he says, what am I supposed to say? You can have those. And I says, no, no, wait, ho, oh, ho, oh, wait. And I said, but I'll, I'll tell you what I do. I'll take them and I'll type them up. And we'll do something, you know, with those notes to make it. Well, we did. We typed them up, and it turned into an 85-page manuscript, a copy of which here is here. Every mission, what he got up, what time he got up in the morning, what they had for breakfast, how many pounds of fuel they put in the B-24, yada, 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 it went down the line. And you can go through here and read this chronicle of his career. He, on page, uh, I don't know what it is here, page 49 of 87, mission number 17, uh, they ran into a, 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 a ME-209, first jets in combat, German jets. I said, he, he notes in here, they were really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and he tells about how much fuel, they, you know. And this went on and on and on. And he, yeah, that's right, 262, yeah. ME 262, yeah. It's all in the diary. Well, his, uh, his son, grandson, Greg Bailey, was a historian for Texas A&M uh, Texas University down in College Station. And he's got this written into the archives, and it's part of the archives. It's, it's a real, you could write a movie about this, those 35 missions right here. They're just awesome and very factual. And he did it, and uh, I asked him, I said, why'd you do that? And he says, well, it needed to be done. I said, oh, okay, so well, let's do it upright. So we did it upright. And, and we, got, we got this thing put together with the help of uh, 
again, our chapter members and Brian Burston, who's a computer whiz, and he formed, formed, formed this and, and edited it and put it together. And it's really a good read. Now, I don't want to go any, any farther because I, this, this is crummy weather. <laughs> But I wanted you to, I want you to know that Dick Bailey finally got the recognition across the board. And the fact that we've got to thank him for this document. I didn't keep it, I kept, I kept a copy for myself, but I made sure he got his records back. He passed, he passed in 2016. And I, I'm, I was unfortunately in Hawaii at the time, and I didn't know it. And I missed the, the, his, his departure ceremony, if you will. But his grandsons got the records. And they're in the records down at Texas A&M. Uh, what's the lesson learned here? Well, in my, in my opinion, the lesson learned here is when opportunity comes like this and you meet a gem, you peel back the, the surface and there's more there. There's more to Dick Bailey than that grunch and old curmudgeon. <laughs> he was a wonderful person. And I enjoyed going to lunch with him. He even invited me to go eat soup with the old timers. You know? And uh, he lived independently until he was 93 years old. Wow. Wonderful guy, wonderful guy. But what I really want to point out here to y'all is, is Never let an opportunity go by. And take, take that opportunity and, and, and do something. If it's the right thing to do, do it. Never let that opportunity go by. Always say thanks. Thanks to every, thanks Dick Bailey. Thank you, everybody like that. Don't forget that. And the other thing is, Dick was, he, he sent in his squadron in England. They, they flew his, their missions out of England. And his, in his squadron, in his, it was uh, Walter Matthau, uh, uh, Jimmy Stewart. Wow. Yeah, they were all arm in arm. I said, you, yeah, we, we, all those guys all the time. Yeah. And, the, and he was very appreciative of the fact that there was a lot of direction. Somebody, somebody took, took that, uh, that opportunity, gave him. He was... In, he was uh, exempt from going into the, he had an exemption because he was a tool and die maker. The John Deere, John Deere stood by him while he was gone and held his job till they got, he got back. But it was the right thing to do and I think we did it right. And we, we said thanks to Dick Bailey in the proper way. And now uh, it's, it's an opportunity to acknowledge the achievements. And that's one thing about leadership in the military or any other thing, private industry. Take pride in the accomplishments of your subordinates. They make you look good. If they do good, you look good. And that's something you should consider in all aspects of what you do in your life. So I say today, thank you, Dick Bailey, for giving us the opportunity to let people know that you were not only an ordinary guy, but you were a very responsible as it is a testimony in this document. He did the thing and he did it right. So we know what it was like at, at, during his little slice of of uh, time on this earth. So I say to Dick, thank you very much. God bless America. God bless our police officers. And God bless our first responders. Okay? Amen. Thank you very much. It's been a great time. Wow. Thank you, sir, very much.
Uh, next, we'd like to uh, have everybody stand, please. I, I got this one right. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. We're going to do the placement of our uh, of our wreath, and that would be the mayor and uh, and Wright. Yeah. <laughs> Even the flower bouquet was cold. <laughs> Benediction. As we go from this place, may we pray for God's blessing on the United States of America. And remember that any blessing we receive, it's always meant to be passed on, to be a blessing to others. May we go forth and honor the memories of those who have served and take advantage of every opportunity that God gives to us to serve others. Amen. Please remain standing. Retire the colors.
right face, forward at a half step, march. Please have a seat. You know, they, uh, they talked about taking opportunities. Um, I, got, I got some uh, sad news when I first arrived today that uh, a longtime friend of, of mine and ours, Mike Fisher, has passed away last night. He, was, uh, he and I were young, stupid, brand new cops in, in Iowa, in, in Bedorf, back in the early 70s. And uh, he passed away last night. So uh, I, I had the intention of getting a hold of his wife this weekend and seeing how he was doing, where he was at, and see if he was capable of uh, having visitors. And you know, there's an opportunity that's that's missed. So something to think about. So thank you so much for coming. Um, we have application forms. If you have. Anyone, family member, any friend, neighbor that's a veteran that's uh, been honorably discharged or is on active duty, if you see me for those. We also had started several years ago an endowment to uh, help pay for incidentals. We do have a program if, if uh, a spouse or a family of a veteran can't afford the, uh, the cost of putting a name on. Then uh, we we help them with that. I also just spotted Nadine Larson right over here. Hi, Nadine. Uh, her husband was a uh, Vietnam veteran and passed away uh, almost two years ago. Great guy, and uh, the family donated one of our uh, benches. So uh, that's a nice addition, and we thank you very much for that. So with, with that, if uh, I think that'll do it, let's have some hot chocolate, coffee, there's some cookies back there, or head to your cars and, and thaw out. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless America.